Hello everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, bringing a video for you guys today. Uh, and I'm going to use, to make the video, I'm going to use as an example here, the uh, Singer 301A, the one you see right in front of you. Uh, this is another Singer 301 Black uh, machine that I have. Um, and I'll be making a video uh, when I'm finished with the overhaul, so uh, you can see the, fin the finished product, and I'll put a link on that video to the posting. But the reason you're looking at this machine today is not because I want to demonstrate its sewing capacity or features. Uh, this machine is one that I purchased. Someone had gotten it somewhere. I don't know if it was an estate sale or where they got it, and they had it for sale and uh, something was being cleared out, and then I bought it from them. Now, you may or may not remember, this is the 301, by the way, that when I got it, it had a, a really nice Singer button-style foot pedal, but it did not have, uh, it was missing both the, the little rubber feet for the pedal and some of the screws, but uh, I'm gonna be disassembling this and inspecting it. I think the pedal itself is okay, it just needs new rubber feet, uh, and I have them, I, I keep those. Um, you can get new reproductions, or I also have some originals that are in really good shape, believe it or not. And I will be uh, <clears throat> uh, restoring or overhauling the foot pedal along with the machine. So why am I showing the machine to you today? Well, I wanted to put this in my cleaning and uh, paint finish series because I wanted to talk about something that I, I learned on, a, on an earlier machine several years ago. Uh, a lot of times when you get a machine, it will look like this. This one has dust. And so I'm going to zoom in here and let all of you watch me uh, not just take the dust off, but I will explain why we're going to take a closer look. Now you're looking at the bed of the machine, right? And you may not notice when you get it because it has, you know, it has some dust. So I've just got this, I've got a soft paintbrush here. You can use any number of things. Um, I've got some very extra soft Kleenex tissues, which um, the extra soft Kleenex is, uh, I think that's what I've got here. Yeah, the ultra soft uh, Kleenex, <laughs> which is uh, gentle. Remember, you wanna use gentle things when you're trying to clean your machine, particularly when it's got dust or who knows, they come with all kinds of stuff on them. Underneath the dust is actually, on this singer, is a beautiful, uh, very nice glossy black finish uh, not any real there's really no scrapes or missing paint per se but now I'm going to show you all uh, and this is actually pretty typical right I've seen better I've seen worse <clears throat> sort of middle of the road in terms of what you might find now uh, what I want to hone in on though is something that really has to do with the finish itself. And I'm gonna move the camera further in. Now that we have a closer up view, what you're seeing is uh, an, a machine that actually looks very nice when you look at it from above. When you look at it from the side, you will see some of the wear marks. Now, the first time I ever was able to notice this, I could see a difference between the black color of the machine and then this other area, which looks like uh, sort of a cloudy, yellowed, slightly yellowed uh, coating of some sort. And when I first saw this years ago, I thought it was old dirt. Maybe it was just old sewing machine oil. And so I cleaned and cleaned, and I could not get it to, to really clean up. Now in the back, you're going to see lots of little tiny scuff marks. This is very common. This is an area that very likely would have had... Uh, I think someone would have been using pins. Remember, pins were and still are very much a part of sewing. And it's not unusual for a machine bed to have a few pin scratches. Remember, these were not collectibles when they were new. They were, they were appliances and people were, uh, excuse me, they were using these uh, to get work done. <clears throat> so, you know, they, they took care of them, but they weren't paying that close of attention, at least some of the, the people who had them. Now, this is what I really wanted to talk to all of you about. When I had that machine several years ago, I thought I was looking at either, you know, nicotine or old oil and it had to come off because there was this beautiful black finish below. 
Well, what I discovered at that time is that no matter how much I cleaned, I couldn't get this off. And I would take my thumbnail and I would come against it. And again, this is with oil, oil on the machine. And I would find that I could remove some of it with a great deal of work and effort. Oh gosh. So I went around the whole machine and just as a precaution, I was extra careful. I avoided the area where my decals were and I'm glad I did. Because of course, later I realized that in fact, this is not old oil. Old oil, uh, and I'm gonna do some, some uh, oil, I'm gonna take sewing machine oil here, which one, you know my favorite cleaners that I can use on a machine. And I'm going to apply it. Actually, I'm going to just put a few drops on the bed. And half of the bed, I'm going to apply the oil. I'm just gonna rub it in very gently with this ultra soft Kleenex, which is, um, they have different grades of Kleenex, believe it or not, and it seems extra soft, right? Now, even with my having, you know, rubbed this uh, with the Kleenex, a little, little soiling came off. I haven't really let the oil set, set in and do its thing, but take a look here. Even when you put the oil on, We'll get it to zoom in there. You will see a difference. Now, if I tilt the machine toward you, let's see if that helps. There you go. Now you see where I put the oil, right? You see the deep, rich black area, which of course is the black lacquer paint. Um, this paint would have been, again, baked on in the, in the factory. And then this is not old oil, okay? If I take my thumb, I can pull some of this. It takes a lot of effort. And what the problem with this is, if you do this, you are going to damage very likely your decals because you cannot remove this, this, this sort of old coating, not the black, but the stuff on top without removing your decals. Why? Because this is the original clear coat and some of it has worn away. It's not really that it's peeled. Uh, it never really failed in that way. It was just, you know, the bed and the machine was used and it wore away. That clear coating is very important because again, it protects your decals. When the machines were painted, they had their, their color coat, in this case black, and then they would apply the decals um, and then they would uh, cover or, or coat the machine with its final coat of clear lacquer. Now you can see that this machine has a little bit of uh, decal loss on the front and that's pretty normal. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty common and it doesn't affect the machine at all. I consider this level of wear to be patina. You know, that to me is just the history of generations of people using this machine. And I'm, like I say, some people uh, have been known to strip these machines, uh, to try to repaint them. You, you know, you can get decal sets for them. But you really want to know before you even consider doing that, that is a project of epic proportions, okay? Uh, why do I say that? In order to do something like that correctly, to literally take the paint off, to go back to the base and then to prime it, to paint it with a black lacquer to get the really true shine. And then you've got to put decals and then clear lacquer. We're talking about a project it is unbelievably labor intensive. If you have it done and it's done right, expect to pay a ton of money, far more than you would pay for the machine. Most people do not do this. A few people have done it mostly with featherweights, although I think some of the 301s have been custom painted. Sometimes you see them in candy apple red. And some of the people who do that work do incredible work. They are beautiful. Uh, but of course, my focus is on overhauling, restoring, conserving, um, stabilizing these machines so that they can continue to work for their new owners. And I spend a lot of time cleaning them with my Q-tips and um, my tissues and so forth. And I do that because I want them to be beautiful. You know, all of us want our, you know, things to look nice. And uh, of course we do. And, you know, the majority of the paint on this uh, machine is gorgeous. And so the machine will be beautiful. I tend to feel that wear marks, with the exception of certain machines, I think you all saw the Neki that I did the paint restoration on, <clears throat> uh, but typically I don't. 
Uh, I don't do a lot of, this looks like something, like a stain on the edge there. I'll have to get that off the edge of the machine. A uh, little stain there. But the reason I wanted to show this to you all is that if you ever see this, this area that I'm talking about, be very careful to, that you can tell the difference between dirt and old clear lacquer, okay? Because dirt or soiling or even old sewing machine oil, when you take a uh, new sewing machine oil, right? And I've let some of that oil sit on there. I'm gonna come back and I'm just rubbing half of the bed of the machine here. This is usually the last thing I ever do to a machine. You'll notice that I'm getting some, uh, not a lot of soiling, there's not a lot of dirt on this machine, but that area that you see there is uh, just the wear marks or the worn areas of the clear coat. And my suggestion is that you clean the machine, use things like sewing machine oil. I mean, in an upcoming video, I'll share with you all a few, a few other things you might be able to try, some hand cleaner. Um, you always try everything with caution and, you know, do it in an cons uh, inconspicuous spot first. But sewing machine oil, I'm pretty confident, is, uh, is not going to harm the finish because that's the one thing the manufacturer knew was going to get spilled on these when people went to oil their machines back in the day. Uh, but anyway, this is just a word to the wise. Make sure that you know the difference between stains, soiling, and what might look like soiling to you is in fact, let me make sure this camera is zooming, is that what you're seeing here is not dirt, it's not old oil, this is the old finish. Now once you clean and you buff this whole machine with sewing machine oil, a lot of that difference between the two areas, between the, uh, the old clear coat and the black, a lot of that will disappear and you won't really pay much attention to it uh, you know, like you would any other little little uh, uh, scuff that you might have on a machine. But if you make the mistake of thinking this is dirt and you try to get it off, you may succeed, but then once you start, you're gonna have to basically do the whole machine. You're gonna have to go around your decals to save them, and then you're gonna end up with these little islands, these little strange splotches. And I find that it's best just to leave sleeping dogs lie, you know? Clean it, stabilize it, um, restore it, but I'm not uh, one that believes in stripping and refinishing because my customers are wanting machines that are beautiful, but they want machines that are restored and ready to work. And it takes so much labor and effort to bring a vintage sewing machine back, when it, particularly when they've been sitting for a while, which is the case with most of them, that most of what my uh, clients are paying for is my labor to restore the machine. And I always, again, clean them and I polish the metal and I buff the paint finish. But again, I really prefer to have original, um, you know, original factory finishes uh, with a few exceptions, like when I have a big section near the hand wheel on the necky, the little black necky BCJ that I did some paint and did a video on. So this is part of the finish series and this is just kind of a heads up. Be aware, you typically see this uh, almost exclusively on the black machines. The other colors in sewing machines that come along in the 50s and 60s, like the beige machines, I have not found that to be um, an issue, and it could be that they changed the, uh, the paint process that they used on those. They may have, because again, uh, they were using a lot less decals by the 50s and 60s, right? Or by the 60s, you got those beige machines. You don't see a lot of the decals you saw with the black ones. And uh, so I don't know exactly how many layers of lacquer they used, but just keep in mind that you want to know the difference. If you want to know if it's soiling and you, you take the sewing machine oil and you're not, you know, it's not coming up, there's a good chance that that's lacquer. So make sure you know the difference and that way you will not create headaches for yourself or one whopper of a project if you ever decide to refinish a machine because 99% um, of the people who get vintage machines want them to be clean and restored and gorgeous, just as this Singer 301 will be. Uh, but uh, the idea of stripping and repainting them is really, um, it's just not something that I am interested in investing. I want my time to be invested in bringing the mechanicals back to the machine and cleaning them and giving them some polish and uh and and having you know 
the machine ready for a new owner who will be proud to to uh, to take take ownership of it and use it to sew projects. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned. I will be bringing more videos uh, when it comes to the 301 here, and certainly we'll do one when it's ready. Thank you all for watching.